the bond of human friendship has a sweetness of its own, binding many souls together as one. Yet because of these values, sin is committed. Because we have an inordinate preference for these goods of a lower order, and neglect the better and the higher good, neglecting thee, O our Lord God, and thy truth and thy law. For these inferior values have their delights, but not at all equal to my God, who hath made them all. For in him do the righteous delight, and he is the sweetness of the upright in heart. When, therefore, we inquire why a crime was committed, we do not accept the explanation unless it appears that there was the desire to obtain some of those values which we designate inferior, or else a fear of losing them. For truly they are beautiful and comely, though in comparison with the superior and celestial goods they are abject and contemptible. A man has murdered another man. What was his motive? Either he desired his wife or his property, or else he would steal to support himself, or else he was afraid of losing something to him, or else, having been injured, he was burning to be revenged. Would a man commit murder without a motive, taking delight simply in the act of murder? Who would believe such a thing? Even for that savage and brutal man, of whom it was said that he was gratuitously wicked and cruel, there is still a motive assigned to his deeds. Lest through idleness, he says, hand or heart should grow inactive. And to what purpose? Why, even this, that, having once got possession of the city through his practice of his wicked ways, he might gain honours, empire, and wealth, and thus be exempt from the fear of the laws, and from financial difficulties in supplying the needs of his family, and from the consciousness of his own wickedness. So it seems that even Catiline himself loved not his own villainies, but something else, and it was this that gave him the motive for his crimes. Chapter 6 What was it in you, O theft of mine, that I, poor wretch, doted on, you deed of darkness, in that sixteenth year of my age? Beautiful you were not, for you were a theft. But are you anything at all, so that I could analyze the case with you? Those pears that we stole were fair to the sight, because they were thy creation, O beauty beyond compare, O creator of all, O thou good God, God the highest good, and my true good. Those pears were truly pleasant to the sight, but it was not for them that my miserable soul lusted, for I had an abundance of better pears. I stole those simply that I might steal, for having stolen them, I threw them away. My sole gratification in them was my own sin, which I was pleased to enjoy, for if any one of those pears entered my mouth, the only good flavor it had was my sin in eating it. And now, O Lord my God, I ask what it was in that theft of mine that caused me such delight. For behold, it had no beauty of its own, certainly not the source of beauty that exists in justice and wisdom, nor such as is in the mind, memory senses, and the animal life of man, nor yet the kind that is the glory and beauty of the stars in their courses, nor the beauty of the earth, nor the sea, teeming with spawn in life, replacing in birth that which dies and decays. Indeed, it did not have that false and shadowy beauty which attends the deceptions of vice. For thus we see pride wearing the mask of high spiritedness, although only thou, O God, art high above all. Ambition seeks honour and glory, whereas only thou shouldst be honours above all and glorified for ever. The powerful man seeks to be feared because of his cruelty, but who ought really to be feared but God only? What can be forced away or withdrawn out of his power? 
when or where or whither or by whom. The enticements of the wanton claim the name of love, and yet nothing is more enticing than thy love, nor is anything loved more healthfully than thy truth, bright and beautiful above all. Curiosity prompts a desire for knowledge, whereas it is only thou who knowest all things supremely. Indeed, ignorance and foolishness themselves go masked under the names of simplicity and innocence. Yet there is no being that has true simplicity like thine, and none is innocent as thou art. Thus, it is that by a sinner's own deeds he is himself harmed. Human sloth pretends to long for rest, but what sure rest is there save in the Lord? Luxury would vain be called plenty and abundance, but thou art the fullness and unfailing abundance of unfading joy. Prodigality presents a show of liberality, but thou art the most lavish giver of all good things. Covetousness desires to possess much, but thou art already the possessor of all things. Envy contends that its aim is for excellence, but what is so excellent as thou? Anger seeks revenge, but who avenges more justly than thou? Fear recalls at the unfamiliar and the sudden changes which threaten things beloved and is wary for its own security. But what can happen that is unfamiliar or sudden to thee? Or who can deprive thee of what thou lovest? Where, really, is there unshaken security save with thee? Grief languishes for things lost in which desire had taken delight, because it wills to have nothing taken from it, just as nothing can be taken from thee. Thus the soul commits fornication when she is turned from thee, and seeks apart from thee what she cannot find pure and untainted until she returns to thee. All things thus imitate thee, but pervertedly when they separate themselves far from thee and raise themselves up against thee. But even in this act of perverse imitation they acknowledge thee to be creator of all nature and recognize that there is no place whither they can altogether separate themselves from thee. What was it then that I loved in that theft? And wherein was I imitating my Lord even in a corrupt and perverted way? Did I wish, if only by gesture, to rebel against thy law, even though I had no power to do so actually, so that, even as a captive, I might produce a sort of counterfeit liberty, by doing with impunity deeds that were forbidden in a deluded sense of omnipotence. Behold this servant of thine, fleeing from his lord and following a shadow. O oh, rottenness! O oh, monstrousness of life and abyss of death! Could I find pleasure only in what was unlawful, and only because it was unlawful? Chapter 7 What shall I render unto the Lord, for the fact that while my memory recalls these things, my soul no longer fears them? I will love thee, O Lord, and thank thee, and confess to thy name, because thou hast put away from me such wicked and evil deeds. To thy grace I attribute it, and to thy mercy, that thou hast melted away my sin as if it were ice. To thy grace also I attribute whatsoever of evil I did not commit. For what might I not have done, loving sin as I did, just for the sake of sinning? Yea, all of the sins that I confess now to have been forgiven me, both those which I committed willfully and those which, by thy providence, I did not commit. What man is there who, when reflecting upon his own infirmity, dares to ascribe his chastity and innocence to his own powers, so that he should love thee less, as if he were in less need of thy mercy, in which thou forgivest the transgressions of those that return to thee? As for the man who, when called by thee, obeyed thy voice, and shunned those things which he here reads of me, as I recall and confess them of myself, let him not despise me. For I, who was sick, have been healed by the same physician by whose aid it was that he did not fall sick, or rather, 
was less sick than I. And for this, let him love thee just as much, indeed, all the more, since he sees me restored from such a great wickedness of sin by the selfsame Saviour by whom he sees himself preserved from such a weakness. Chapter 8 What profit did I, a wretched one, receive from those things which, when I remember them now, cause me shame? Above all, from that theft, which I loved only for the theft's sake, and, as the theft itself was nothing, I was all the more wretched in that I loved it so. Yet by myself alone I would not have done it. I still recall how I felt about this then. I could not have done it alone. I loved it then because of the companionship of my accomplices with whom I did it. I did not, therefore, love the theft alone. Yet, indeed, it was only the theft that I loved for the companionship was nothing. What is this paradox? Who is it that can explain to me but God, who illumines my heart and searches out the dark corners thereof? What is it that has prompted my mind to inquire about it, to discuss and to reflect upon all this? For had I at that time loved the pears that I stole and wished to enjoy them, I might have done so alone if I could have been satisfied with a mere act of theft by which my pleasure was served. Nor did I need to have that itching of my own passions inflamed by the encouragement of my accomplices. For since the pleasure I got was not from the pairs, it was in the crime itself, enhanced by the companionship of my fellow sinners. Chapter 9 By what passion, then, was I animated? It was undoubtedly depraved and a great misfortune for me to feel it. But still, what was it? Who can understand his errors? We laughed because our hearts were tickled at the thought of deceiving the owners, who had no idea of what we were doing and would have strenuously objected. Yet again, why did I find such delight in doing this which I would not have done alone? Is it that no one readily laughs alone? No one does so readily, but still sometimes, when men are by themselves and no one else is about, a fit of laughter will overcome them when something very droll presents itself to their sense or mind. Yet alone I would not have done it. Alone I could not have done it at all. Behold, my God! The lively review of my soul's career is laid bare before thee. I would not have committed that theft alone. My pleasure in it was not what I stole, but rather the act of stealing. Nor would I have enjoyed doing it alone. Indeed, I would not have done it. O oh, friendship all unfriendly, you strange seducer of the soul, who hungers for mischief from impulses of mirth and wantonness, who craves another's loss without any desire for one's own profit or revenge, so that when they say, Let's go, let's do it, we are ashamed not to be shameless. Chapter 10 Who can unravel such a twisted and tangled knottiness? It is unclean. I hate to reflect upon it. I hate to look on it. But I do long for thee, O righteousness and innocence, so beautiful and comely to all virtuous eyes. I long for thee with an insatiable satiety. With thee is perfect rest and life unchanging. He who enters into thee enters into the joy of his Lord, and shall have no fear, and shall achieve excellence in the excellent. I fell away from thee, O my God, and in my youth I wandered too far from thee, my true support, and I became to myself a wasteland. End of Book Two Confessions by Saints Augustine